Welcome back to this new inspirational video. Today I wanted to go on with chapter 12 titled Thought from the book The Science of Being Great. Now thought is the power that will guide you into all wisdom and to, into success if that is what you want. This chapter is going to remind us of this but it's something you have to contemplate for yourself. Are you really thinking? Are you really using the power of thought to improve your life? Because no matter where you stand, you can think great thoughts. You can think about great ideas. That is really what we want to grasp. Because once we do that, we can start growing towards it. That is the beauty of it all. But every time we face negativity in our lives, odds are that your mind is thinking about the negativity itself and not on the solution. It's not thinking about great ideas that could solve this whole issue to begin with that we're facing. And this, once it dawns upon you, puts you in a position to start outgrowing and improving everything around you in your world. Now, Walter started this chapter by saying, Greatness is only attained by the constant thinking of great thoughts. No person can become great in outward personality until they are great internally. And nobody can be great internally until they think. No amount of education, reading or study can make you great without thought. But thought can make you great with very little study. There are altogether too many people who are trying to make something of themselves by reading books without thinking. All such will fail. We could also say that it's the same with watching videos like this, for example. There are many people who watch these kinds of videos, but they're not really thinking about what they're learning or what they're hearing in the video. But if you start doing that for yourself, you will start to learn more and more about your own mind, about the power of your own mind, because you start to well, quicken it into activity for yourself. And then the wisdom starts to rise up from the depths of your own being. Now Wallace went on to say that you are not mentally developed by what you read or what you listen to on YouTube, but by what you think about what you read or listening to in this case. Thinking is the hardest and most exhausting of all labor, and hence many people shrink from it. God has so formed us that we are continuously impelled to thought. We must either think or engage in some activity to escape thought. The headlong continuous chase for pleasure, in which most people spend all of their leisure time, is only an effort to escape thought. If they are alone, or if they have nothing amusing to take their attention, as a novel to read or a show to see, they must think. And to escape from thinking, they resort to novels, shows, and all of the endless devices of the purveyors of amusement. Most people spend the greater part of their leisure time running away from thought, hence they are where they are. We never move forward until we begin to think. I underlined that part because I know this is still true to this day and age, especially in this day and age with technology. It's so easy to be distracted by things. You can just open up your browser on your computer or iPad or phone even, and you can start watching some videos mindlessly that might serve as entertainment value, but you're not really learning anything from them. And before you know it, a couple hours have passed, you gotta go to bed and tomorrow the grind starts all over again for going to your day job or to your school for studies. But is it really leading us to watch a fulfilled life? I think the moment we live a fulfilled life is in co direct correlation to us realizing the power of our own minds. Because once you understand yourself and your own consciousness, that is when real joy can start to develop and rise up from within you. Because you finally found the key and the solution to all of your problems. Think about it. It's all dependent on how we are using our minds. So the more time we spend running away from thought or just entertaining ourselves, well, we could use that same time to learn how to think for ourselves. That's essentially what he's saying. Now he went on to say, read less and think more. Read about great things and think about great questions and issues. Thinking, not mere knowledge or information, makes personality. Thinking is growth. You cannot think without growing. Every thought engenders another thought. Write one idea and others will follow until you have written a page. You cannot fathom your own mind. It has neither bottom nor boundaries. Your first thoughts may be crude, but as you go on thinking, you will use more and more of yourself. You will quicken new brain cells into activity and you develop new faculties. Heredity, environment, circumstances, all things must give way before you if you practice a sustained and continuous thought. 
But on the other hand, if you neglect to think for yourself and only use other people's thoughts, you will never know what you are capable of and you will end by being incapable of anything. There can be no real greatness without original thought. All that a man does outwardly is the expression and completion of his inward thinking. This is so beautiful because it's the truth. All that you're witnessing on this channel is basically the outward expression of my inward thinking. I've been thinking about this channel. I think about the ideas for the videos that I want to share on this channel. And now you're watching the outward expression of a thought that was in my mind. In this case, the thought being, let's go over this book, share some additional points so that people hopefully start believing in it for themselves so that they can make use of it. Because sometimes I realize there's great value in listening to somebody else talk about material that you're studying in your own time if you don't have friends or family that are studying it with you. So then at least you have somebody to listen to that knows this works because I know this material works, it can really improve your life. And that way it might make it easier for you to start believing in it for yourself and then apply it once and for all. Now he went on to say that no action is possible without thought and no great action is possible until a great thought has preceded it. Action is the second form of thought and personality is the materialization of thought. Environment is the result of thought. Things group themselves or arrange themselves around you according to your thought. There is, as Emerson says, some central idea or conception of yourself by which all the facts of your life are arranged and classified. Change this central idea and you change the arrangement or classification of all facts and circumstances of your life. Now that might sound a little complicated, but he simplified it here in the next line. You are what you are because you think as you do. You are where you are because you think as you do. Now, let me digress for a moment, but do you understand what that means? Have you considered this for yourself? That you are what you are because you think as you do and that you are where you are because you think as you do. So basically the job you now have is because of how you've been thinking. So if you want a better job, you're going to have to start thinking about that better job and what that means and what that entails and become emotionally involved in that inside your consciousness. So that way you become a magnet, you become magnetized to that sort of job and you will literally grow towards it. You will be compelled to go there to make that happen. Now, since we're usually living in a sort of, well, hypnotism of the physical world, we we really don't question this, we really don't think about it clearly enough to see the truth behind this. We just go along with how life has been laid out for us based on the rules of society instead of obeying the rules of spirit. And these books, this information is telling you how spirit is operating with and through you to the power of thought in this case. He went on to say, you see now the immense importance of thinking about the great essentials set forth in the preceding chapters. You must not accept them in any superficial way. You must think about them until they are a part of your central idea. Go back to the matter of the point of view and consider, in all its bearings, the tremendous thought that you live in a perfect world among perfect people and that nothing can possibly be wrong with you but your own personal attitude. Think about all this until you fully realize all that it means to you. Consider that this is God's world and that it is the best of all possible worlds, that he has brought it thus far toward completion by the processes of organic, social and industrial evolution, and that it is going on to greater completeness and harmony. Consider that there is one great, perfect, intelligent principle of life and power, causing all the changing phenomena of the cosmos. Think about all this until you see that it is true, and until you comprehend how you should live and act as a citizen of such a perfect whole. Next, think of the wonderful truth that this great intelligence is in you. It is your own intelligence. It is an inner light impelling you toward the right thing and the best thing, the greatest act and the highest happiness. It is a principle of power in you, giving you all the ability and genius there is. It will infallibly guide you to the best if you submit to it and walk in the light. Consider what is meant by your consecration of yourself when you say, I will obey my soul. This is a sentence of tremendous meaning. It must revolutionize the attitude and behavior of the average person. Then think of your identification with this great supreme, that all its knowledge is yours, 
and all its wisdom is yours for the asking. You are a god if you think like a god. If you think like a god, you cannot fail to act like a god. Divine thoughts will surely externalize themselves in a divine life. Thoughts of power will end in a life of power. Great thoughts will manifest in a great personality. Think well of all this, and then you are ready to act. Now that is the end of the chapter. Really think about what he just said. Again, if we briefly go over this, when we consider the power of thought in our own lives, we have to understand that every single day we have a choice to think great thoughts or negative thoughts. We can think of greatness in any given career that we're passionate about. We can think of greatness in our love life. We can think of greatness in our family life, in our friendships. And then as we think of greatness, of what that means, what our soul is compelling us to do if these things were great, you're going to find that you're going to be led into all sorts of wonderful, uplifting activities. You're going to want to reach out to people in a way more uplifting, well, manner. Your friends, family, everybody is going to be uplifted by you. Now perhaps they don't notice it or they don't care or they really don't see it. But you're going to feel it for yourself because the thoughts of greatness are going to flow with and through you. You're learning to express greatness at will. That is what you want to grasp here, is that you have that choice. So if I would give you a simple example from my own life. I can think about friendships that I have, and if I think about greatness, doing something great for them, all sorts of ideas might occur in my mind. And then if I were to act on them, well, I'm doing exactly what this chapter is suggesting. I'm learning to express and externalize great thoughts. That's all there is to it. That is exactly what you can do. That is what you are called upon to do. I know at first it might seem a little tricky or weird. We're so worried about how other people are treating us. So when we are treating them in a great way and they don't treat us in a great way, we might suddenly get upset about that, but we don't want to do that. We are learning to give. We are learning to circulate great thoughts into our worlds. And these great thoughts, they come from God, from the spirit of life. So we should be thankful about it. We should be thankful that we have a mind that gives us the ability to do this. You have a mind, you have the ability to do it. It's absolutely wonderful. Can't you see? Well, I hope after this video you start to grasp it more and more. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to receive inspirational videos on a regular basis. And with that being said, dear viewer, never forget that we are the dreamers.